Welcome to the dim drive video on benchmarks. What we're going to do is we're going to run dim drive. We're going to set it up and do a couple benchmarks so we can uh, show you what the speeds look like when running the software. And what we're, we're going to do, we're going to benchmark a mechanical drive, a solid state drive, and then dim drive. Now, one caveat is that we are recording video, which is very, very CPU, um, slightly memory, but very disk IO intensive. So this benchmark is going to be a little bit school, uh, skewed. We're gonna write this little caveat down. Um, we are recording video while doing this benchmark. Okay, that's actually a very large caveat. But nonetheless, let's run a benchmark here. We're gonna run Crystal Disk Mark, 64-bit uh, version, and we're gonna do somewhat quick benchmarks just so we can keep this video down to a minimum here. Now, the first drive we're gonna benchmark is my F drive, and my F drive is a Seagate four terabyte mechanical mechanical drive. It's the, uh, it's probably a Barracuda. It's whatever their standard four terabyte was. It was maybe, maybe $200. Um, so that's the first one that we're gonna do. That's my F drive right here. You can see 3.7 whatever terabytes. We're gonna do 100 meg and we're gonna hit all. One thing that dim drive does is it uses your RAM to create a hard drive. Now, in addition to doing that, it interfaces directly with uh, any Steam game that you have. You can see I have a whole bunch of Steam games listed at the bottom here. My favorite's probably Duke Nukem, which is a tiny game, doesn't require really any system resources to run. If you guys played Duke Nukem back in the day, fantastic game. So Dim Drive interfaces directly in Steam, so you'll see every game you have installed in Steam listed here. Uh, Dim Drive also functions with whatever program. Um, if you want to set up Firefox or uh, Adobe Photoshop or World of Warcraft, you know any other program, you can set that up, which we'll cover in a little bit. Um, and then you can just have it as a generic, whatever size hard drive that you want to set up. But for this test right now, we're going to do just some benchmarks. So we're about finished on our Crystal Disk Mark. Uh, just a really quick 100 megabyte about halfway finished uh, benchmark here. And you, this is this hard drive is actually a very good hard drive. Um, I think this is the fastest mechanical hard drive I think I've owned. And I've owned the Velociraptor drives and a lot of different drives. And you'll notice that when there's not much access going on for this drive, I'm getting 113, 121 for write and read megabytes per second. Um, 4Ks are going to uh, be very, very small because it's a mechanical drive. But otherwise, uh, speeds for a mechanical drive are pretty sound. Now, my solid state drive is a very nice drive. It's a Samsung 840 Pro, and I believe they're the 256 gig model. Yeah, the 256 gig. Now, this is one of the fastest solid state drives you can own right now. It's a very nice drive. So we're gonna take a look at that right now. This is the, on my bottom left, this is the mechanical drive. We're gonna put uh, dim drive right up here. We're gonna put this right here. This is the solid state drive and this is my S drive. We're gonna do the same 100 meg one pass. And this should be very, very quick. These Samsung drives are fantastic, but they are, as fast as they are, you will see it be crushed by the speeds that dim drive will offer. Now, my system is a i7-3930K. I am running right around, I believe, 4.1 gigahertz right now. It's a six core hyper-threaded system. I have 64 gigs of RAM. I have a lot of RAM on this system. Um, that being said, my RAM is not the fastest on this system. Because of how I have things overclocked, when I do overclock very high, I like to keep my system very stable and my RAM does not run very fast at all. For my personal overclocking, I've noticed that that causes some instability in my system. So RAM on this system is actually not very fast. So the benchmarks you see with dim drive will reflect RAM speeds that are lesser than a lot of people are getting, which we'll cover that in a little bit. But let's take a look at the Samsung 840 Pro. You'll notice 534 read, 406 write, and the uh, 4Ks will be pretty quick. 
four keys are going to, going to be if you're playing a game that has lots of different IO accesses at the same time, um, or you're doing something like web browsing and Photoshop and something repeated accesses, that's where 4Ks come in, versus very large sustained file transfers, which are what your larger numbers here will reflect. This is my Samsung drive, it's actually very nice. Um, when you're playing games, a lot of times your games will load very large graphic files um, into your graphic cards memory. Those are very large files. Those you're not gonna have 4Ks there. Um, a lot of games, uh, a lot of games really these days are organized into very large files instead of you know, thousands of smaller files. So for a lot of games that I play personally, the larger transfers are the things that are really important. But now we're gonna run uh, Crystal Disk Mark on Dim Drive here. We're gonna do another quick, quick transfer, and actually we have to set up Dim Drive. So we're gonna do just a 10 gig um, drive. We're gonna set it to the Y drive. We're not really gonna configure anything else and we're just gonna click uh, on. And it'll create the drive, format it, do all that sort of stuff. Um, and then we're gonna run Crystal Disk Mark. We set this up for our Y drive. You notice 10 gigs right here. We're gonna set it up the same, 100 meg, and you're gonna see some blazing fast speeds. So let's set this up right here. So this is Dim Drive. And another caveat, or the same caveat, I'm recording video at 20 megabits per second. So all these benchmarks are gonna be a little bit constrained uh, while that's running. So, and you can take a look at my processors around 30, 30% being used. And so every number that you see here, you could probably increase it maybe 15 or so percent. Well, almost all of them. So, yep, we're gonna run this uh, 100 meg on our dim drive, and we're gonna start it up right now. Should be very quickly, or run very quick. So when we're benchmarking dim drive, let me just put this down here. We have a 10 gigabyte, 10 gigabyte uh, drive. That's really all there is here. You notice my reads right off the bat, 4.5 gigabytes per second. My writes uh, with all the software I have going on will probably, yeah, exactly, will be about 6.5, about two gigabytes per second faster. My 512s will probably be very close to the same, which it looks like they are. I would imagine the write would be maybe a couple hundred megs less. Yep, about 6.1. And then the 4Ks, um, are going to excel. I mean, these, that's the fantastic part about actually having a drive in RAM. We'll take a look at the first drive right here. Take a look at the write 113, so roughly close to the same read and write. The 4Ks at less than one. Solid state drive is quite a bit of a step up. You'll see you know, four times the side, the uh, speed, here, but the concurrent accesses for solid state drive are really, really nice. Whereas a platter drive, that's where it gets crushed. But then take a look at uh, dim drive here. So whereas a solid state drive is maybe four to, I mean, close to five times faster. Dim drive here on my system is close to 15 times faster. And look at my 4Ks between uh, the normal, mechanical drive and dim drive. We have 4Ks that are almost a thousand times faster. We have access speeds that are, what would that be, just close to 50 times faster. That's amazing. And now I ran a, uh, a benchmark, you'll see on my Y drive right here, uh, a little bit of a larger file, but I ran a benchmark while my system was not recording a video. And take a look at the differences. Uh, we have about almost a gig and a half per second speed increase right here. Imagine playing a game, and it, this is why it's important. Imagine playing a game and you have 10 gigs of graphic files, but a one gig, uh, one gig of memory on your GPU. Your GPU is gonna have to dump out and refill and dump out and refill uh, graphical files constantly. Like if there's a big explosion, you're loading a new map, you're, you're doing something. Um, 
when you have a really fast hard drive, you're not gonna lag when there's explosions, you're not gonna lag when you're running around loading new graphic files, you're not gonna lag when you're zoning. Um, there's a huge advantage to having a massively fast disk that is feeding into your CPU, but also feeding into your GPU. And that's what gave me the idea of creating Dim Drive in the first place because of the type of gaming that I play myself. I notice huge lags because of disk IO. And that's where Dim Drive comes in. So you'll notice speeds massively faster. Now, uh, this is my gaming system where RAM isn't quite as fast. Um, I've seen 11 to 12,000 megabytes per second using dim drive um, one of my friends systems we just benchmark uh, about a week ago my system is v actually pretty expensive his system cost about a thousand dollars and he gets close to eleven thousand megabytes per second um, using dim drive so that's a quick little benchmark um, it's not the most perfect benchmark it's not under the absolute ideal situations but you guys can hopefully see um, what I'm trying to show you and understand um, the benefits to using dim drive. So this video is about benchmarks. We're going to have more videos about dim drive actually in use. And thank you for watching and stay tuned for the rest of the videos.